All right, well, welcome to the shop here in Canterbury, New Hampshire. It's been hot, humid, sticky, balmy. So all the materials, even with the AC going, it just feels everything's a little bit more expanded than usual. Uh, was your sound off? Are you on? <laughs> no one even heard you? Okay. So, it's hard to go while you're doing all that. All right, so tonight we're gonna do a little carpentry, believe it or not. Like, I have been busy working on the shop, actually, not uh, things in the shop as much. I do have to still clean up a fair amount. I'm, I'm almost getting to the panic point. Like, you know, when you're gonna have company where I start just putting things in the closet. But I don't have any closets, so I think it's all gonna go downstairs. <laughs> Actually, I don't know, I, we'll figure it out. But we're having company in two weeks time. Actually, two weeks to the day, we will be hosting our first epic weekend event. I almost said epic event. Our first epic weekend event, and we have a group of 20 people are going to be actually here. Our kickoff event is Shop Night Live in the shop. We're going to have a live experience, and man, that's just the start of it. We're going to have a great two days after that uh, with uh, guests like David Lamb and Tim Coleman and amazing food and fun and visiting the Shaker Village and out by the fire pit, all kinds of fun. And you get to meet the camera lady whose sound has been off for a little while. Is it on now? You're off tonight? Apparently she's off tonight. So we're, we're trying to work on her sound. But um, we are we're excited to have people here. You know, it gives you that scrambling feeling of people coming over. And we, there's a lot of things we're doing and have done already to get things ready. But one of the main things I felt like I wanted to do and upgrade was my back stairs. I mean, it's around the back of the shop and nobody really sees that that much. A lot of times people come in the side door, but from now on, I want people to come in the back stairs because I rebuilt the stairs and they're nice and wide. It's a double door and it's all pressure treated wood. Like my neighbor Ed is a builder and he gave me his tips on how to build it stout. He likes things stout. And, and we could move machinery out over this little deck and then these stairs. Um, but when it came to the railing, he was over here before I got it uh, built. He said, what are you gonna put on the rail? Are you gonna just put a a pressure treated board you can't do that you got do you got any nice wood in there <laughs> i was like i have a few boards in here ed and uh but i was like man i don't want to spend too much time on a railing you know i but then it it just got in my head and i couldn't not do something nicer for the railing and just slapping a two by four you know or a pressure treated two by four you know how those railings feel they're by the they're they're three and a half inches wide and an inch and a half thick and it's just clunky it's too wide for the average hand and it doesn't really feel like you're getting a good stable grip i mean if you want the railing to give you a little good grip to go up and down the stairs well it ought to function that way so i decided i would surprise ed and build a really a nicer railing that would have a good feel to it and I actually made my own railing so I got to thinking hey let's talk about that on shop night live it was it was a lot of fun and I built it out of some old heart pine that I had that was reclaimed from a tobacco warehouse in Wilson North Carolina so if you're from that part of the country hope it's going well we got the same weather up here right now I remember it fondly uh, <laughs> unlike you down there, we have some cool crisp nights coming soon enough. And uh, I, I really 
need that. <laughs> I don't do well in the heat, like so many of you, I'm sure. But anyway, here's a, an ec a little extra piece of railing. This is actually going to go on the side porch. I'm not going to try to get it installed before this first group comes. So whoever's in that first group, when you come, you're coming around the back. Okay, you're going to check out the new entrance. Um, so this is a piece of that hard pine. You can see how close grained it is. It's kind of old growthy looking. This end is a little cleaner. And um, one thing about it, sometimes when you cut into this hard pine, it just almost feels wet and you smell a lot of terps, like turpentine. And like this end, it's really kind of almost wet with terps. And you see all that darker color, like it's saturated, because it is saturated. It's, it's got a lot of that kind of, um, I don't know the correct word for it. Somebody can give me a, um, when, it's, when it's got a lot of those terps in it, it's actually considered, Pug used to call it fat wood. Um, it's often sold as fire starter. You can buy these little kindling sticks and it's basically this just chopped up into small pieces because it burns really well. And uh, it, it really, it's almost like it's pre-charged with kerosene or something, but slow burning, <laughs> but it will, yeah, it's a kind of pitch, but it's actually like, it's got the turpentine smell to it. You know, it's got that, that kind of uh, almost like a thinner in there. So that was the natural kind of thinner that they used for years. They would somehow get, get some of that out of there and use it. Are you back on, Sam? Oh, oh. So um, the, uh, so th it's not optimal to build out of that, but I only had a small section that had that, and this was actually meant to be the piece that went down the rail and was the first piece you grabbed onto. But after I shaped it with my handhold, one edge, I just couldn't avoid it. I tried to avoid this kind of punky area where the bugs have gotten into it a little, and uh, just couldn't. And I can't really hide this, so it's kind of a bummer. I just didn't, I couldn't use it. So I use another piece of railing that I have. Um, so it's not actually the continuous piece that goes, I have a little straight piece and then it go, drops down. But anyway, you might have a railing in your house. Like I, I went for a long while after we redid the basement, took the railing off and rebuilt the stairs and, you know, fussing with the walls and the ceiling and everything in the basement. And finally put the railing back on and it was the kind of railing that they installed in the house when the house was built and it's puny it's like one of those little round ones you know and I was realizing man why did I put this back on it's kind of wimpy it doesn't even give you a good handhold I think it's 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 probably no more than two inches in diameter and you hold it it's not not great so I am going to make a new railing for the basement and it'll be something like this, but even a little thicker. So I just want to show you the process I went through to make the rail. Maybe this will help you make a railing for your home, give you some ideas, and we'll go with that. Remember, if you like this content, like, share, and subscribe. Have fun. And I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so we're going to um, make our little railing and do a series of router cuts. Now I've got some samples. I'm just going to use these small little samples to make some a little bit of different pattern but this is generally what you want is a, is a rounded top healthy enough and then a nice cove so the thumb and fingers will set in there and give you a nice feeling of bearing you know some of those old railings and those old houses when you put your hand on them it doesn't just feel right it's like somebody really thought about this you know like Oh, it's got to be an eighth of an inch deeper or higher to the thumb hold. And if I was being critical of myself on this one, I think my hands, maybe this will be perfect for you, but I would like that little cove to be a little further down 
But that's as far as I wanted to push it in this two inch thick material. So what about the dimensions? Well, the square is two and three quarters wide by two inches high. You could go as narrow as two and a half. I, I don't think you want to go less than two and five eighths, really. And at least two inches high. And if you can get more, that'd be great. You could go as much as two and three quarter by two and three quarter. But I've got two blocks here. I've got one that's like this one, that's two inch by two and three quarter. And another sample block that's, that's two and a half inches thick by two and three quarter. So we're going to push that cove down a little bit, like I was saying, and I want to see if it feels better on my hand. All right. So to start out, whenever I'm making a molding like this or anything, I'll usually draw the profile on the end in the, in the orientation that I can see it how it's coming into the cutter head. So when I'm setting up the cutter, I actually can set it, make a light pass, and then adjust the fence over and the, and the bit higher until I creep up on about where I want my line. So I'm gonna just take this, and I know I've got a, I'm gonna go with a nice three inch round over bit um, for my, my handrail. So I'm gonna make a little line. Did I say three inch? A three quarter inch, sorry, three quarter inch round over. I'm coming over three quarter, and I'm gonna go the full three quarter here on this one. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? Um, when I was talking about the epic weekend, if you're hearing about that for the first time, you must not be on our mailing list. So if you wanna hear about these events and, and special videos or courses that we're putting out, you really need to subscribe to the mailing list if you want to be on that insider group. It's epicwoodworking.com. Really simple to sign up for the list. We don't hassle you at all with anything. We don't sell your name or nothing like that. It's all just a little insider community. And if you want, uh, we've got two more events we've, in September and October. They're, everything's sold out full. But we have waiting lists and we have had some people bump up on the waiting list you know, people can't come for one reason or another so you should if you want to be considered get, you can sign up and get on the waiting list if that works out for you for the uh october sorry september and october dates there's not really much chance of getting in on this next one right the, link is in the, description. the oh the link is in the description so, did they hear you? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. The camera lady is somehow. Okay, so while she's reaching for the battery, I am going to draw, just kind of eyeball a three quarter inch round over. So let's say that, like that. And I have memories of Pug doing this. Like, he'd do these complex moldings, and he would just draw them from memory, like, on the ends of these cove moldings, you know, for for uh, chests of drawers and things like that. I'll do another one on this side, even though we don't really need it on this side, just so we can see the whole railing we're shooting for. So that's a nice healthy round over. Now, I did put links to in the description to some, like three options for three quarter inch round over bits. They're really useful and helpful. They're a little more pricey if you buy like the white side or the Freud or the CMT. I put links to the two of those. I'm gonna be using the white side. Then there's a really cheap like yellow imported um, bit that'll cut probably for a little while, but not very long. <laughs> they're, they're not well made, um, but they're functional and it's like one third of the price. So if you don't expect you're going to use it much, it's not a bad option, you know, but um, all right. So once I get my round over like that, it'll be something like that. I can see a little flat there. And then I want to set the cove. Now I want to leave about a quarter inch flat down here. See like that? So I'm gonna bring that up. That's gonna be in the bottom there. 
and I'm going to have my cove come in and I want it to kind of flow over right into the cove and scoop right on out. So I actually looked at this a little bit and I think I need about one and five sixteenths down from the top. This is a little higher than a quarter. Let me go. That's the actual quarter. So I'm going to use a cove bed here. This will be the center of the cove. And this cove bit is 7 eighths diameter. They also call it a box. Oh, what the heck's the name of that? Do you remember that? Are you on again? I guess not. I'm <laughs> um, coming over with the cove. And... So we're going to scoop out the cove here, and that will be using that other bit, which I also put a link for. So it's a 7 16 radius, 7 8 inch overall. And I can show you that one right here. This is the one, this is a, from a Rockler. So you can see that can go right up in there. And I'm a little narrow on it, but it's going to be, you know, the fuller line here. Okay, see how clean that line is? <laughs> So you're going to get something like that, and then I round over there. And that's going to give us a nice finger hold here. Now, it's not going to clean all the way. It's, we're going to have a little lip of an edge there, and we'll have to decide how to clean that up. But with just two simple bits like that, we can make a really nice feeling handrail. Now, there's, all, there's other ways you can dress it up. You could put beads and whatever. But this one, let's try it a little differently. Um, we're going to do a similar thing here. They're we'll, saying um, bullnose bit, core box bit. Yeah, core box bit. Thank you. I don't. I'm not sure why it's called a core box bit. Somebody must know the reason, reason for that. So this time, I'm going to come. Let's see. I'm going to come at least to the center. Let's go an inch and a half down. I hope that's enough. So I have more meat at the bottom. I'm going, what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to eyeball this. That'll be like my three quarter. I'm going to let that bit go deeper and then we'll have our three quarter round. And then we're going to go right over and into our cove. So this is just going to be a healthier kind of more robust kind of uh, thing where the it's but the profile will be very similar it's just going to be deeper down and I'll have a little fillet there like an, a lip or a clean line there so we're going to let that bit go deeper and it's going to just have a rounder fuller feel here okay so you, when I grab it your finger it will be a higher railing so you can see the little bit of a difference here we're kind of squattier here. This is like the railing I built for the shop. And this is the one that we're going to try. All right, so simple. We're just going to use our three quarter inch round over bit. It's already in over here. You want to come over this side, I would okay. think, so you can see the action. <laughs> All right, so here's the bit. And um, this is set so that that bead or the bearing is flush with the fence. You can do that by just using a straight edge, just so you see that it's just making the bearing roll. But you really doesn't even matter that much because the fence is your stop, not the bearing. But if you come out too far with the bearing, you'll feel it bump out like this and kind of fall back in. So I like to get it flush. And then we can raise and lower the cutter to give us the full depth we like. Now, I'm going to start by just bringing up the workpiece. Let's check it out. That's pretty good. My curve I drew is a little flatter than it actually is. Um, but let's unlock this. Now, I don't want to do the whole three quarter in one shot. So I'll just bring it down two turns, which amounts to. A 
a sixteenth of an inch. No, I'm sorry. An eighth of an inch. So sixteenth of an inch each turn. Okay. So let's I'm gonna put on my ear gear here. And I don't have my clicker for the dust collector, so let's see if we can get away with this without making too much dust. Oh wait, here it is. It was right in front of my face. It's a miracle. I just bought this and I was like, oh no, I just... Okay. I'm happy now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, we haven't done much yet, but now we're going to go up those two spins. One, two. I believe that brings us up. No, lock it. I, didn't lock. I think that brings us up pretty close to flush. Let's just check. I'm just a little beyond flush, so I'm going to drop it a touch just so that. That one's going to be rounded over. Let's check it with this one. Okay, so you can see how we are. We're almost following that exactly. I'm a little, it's a little larger the curve than I drew actually, but we're coming point to point. Now we're gonna go and get that cove. Now, this one's set a little differently. Um, actually, what we're gonna do before we switch out bits is I wanna run this one deeper, okay? We're all set with this one. This is just a soft, smooth transition. Uh, this one, we're going to crank it up. I'll go two turns so we can go like an eighth. And let's see what happens with that. Oh, okay. One, two. Sorry. Remember, always remember your safety glasses. Do as I say. Take good care. Okay, that's, that's feeling fuller, you know, into your palm there. I haven't made any thumb hole yet, but we'll play around with that in a minute. Let's switch out the bit. Let's see. I'm going to go just a tiny bit deeper on that, like and I'll show you why in a second. Just go a little bit.
Nice. Okay. I'm going to unplug it so I can make my change. Actually, I can unplug it right here. Okay, so we're going to switch out now to the box. What that's called again? The core box. I mean, I have no association in my mind to remember that name. I can think of co, you know, it's the opposite of like a bullnose, but uh, here we go. Get this can out you of there. Um, remind us what the size of the bit is, hon? It's in the description. Um, yeah, which it's one? It's in the description. Which bit? The core box? Um, she doesn't identify. Oh, I've got, this is the three quarter inch round over. I talked about it earlier in the video. Um, there's three options there in the description. And this is the core box bit. It's a seven eighths diameter or seven sixteenths radius right here. And it's a half inch shank. This one came from Rockler. Um, but I gave you two options in the description. One for a really cheap one and this Rockler one. But comes in handy for making uh, large flutes. I think I got this initially when I made this, um, oh gosh, what do you call that? It was like a sideboard, very contemporary with a stone top and it had these six large turn columns that came up and supported this, this gorgeous green stone. And the columns were made of chestnut and they were fluted. And they needed to be dramatically fluted, heavily fluted like this. So they just were stout and they came up and they just gently came in. And there was, it was a, there was a molding under there and then the stone top. And it ended up being a lot nicer than I thought it would. <laughs> it was, it was kind of contemporary. It was something somebody saw in a designer magazine, you know, like off on the side of one of these architectural digest houses. And uh, man, it was, it was nice. So then you have the bit, you know, and it's, if you buy a bit for a particular project like that, you, you end up, you know, when you're scratching your head for what you're going to do with something there, you, there's a, a shape that could really help you. And that's how I got to using this for the hand, because I don't have a larger cove than that. That's, you can get them larger than that as well. I mean, a, a box core bit. <laughs> core I'll get box. It. A course. <laughs> a core box bit. Yeah, of course. And uh, let's see. Larry says they're also called cove box bits. Oh, okay. Well, that makes more sense, Larry. Yeah. Thank you. Cove box bits. That might be a little easier to remember. Uh, do I have to repeat what you're saying because they're not hearing no, you? No, I'm on now. Oh, yay. What was wrong? I don't know. I just replaced the batteries last week, so I don't, it's a mystery to me. Maybe. Okay, so I'm going to get this insert in here. I'm changing to a smaller insert because it's a smaller diameter cutter. And now let's go with our first one, which I would normally set up. See how I drew it there? I would set it like this. And I can see the shape here, and I move the fence and center it that way. That's, I should have drawn it that way if I wanted to do it for you. <laughs> but um, it's all about me, actually. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I am going to move the fence. Do you want me to come over there? No, you're good. Um, I can just talk about it because I know that that center line Get my handy dandy rule, which I thought I lost too, but I'm trying to do too much lately. So I'm one inch and a six and five sixteenths to the center there. So I can get that. I'll just set that. I'm just gonna look for the center of my cove bit there. I'm just gonna call it a cove bit. And um, 
I just want to see like my five sixteenths right about there. That looks pretty good right there. So let's lock it in. And I got to drop it down a little bit. And this is fun because you kind of inch up on it and you're going to see how it feels in your hand a little bit. It won't be... I'm going to just hold it this way. Just trust me. I'm, I'm just eyeballing to see how it... Looks pretty close. I'm just going to move it a touch. Sorry. That's it right there. What? I can't really find a more exciting view. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, so I'm not sure how deep I went on this one. Let me see. I can't remember. I just kind of sighted it. I'm just about, uh, yeah, a quarter inch deep to the deepest of that cove. So let's do this one in a couple of passes as well. You never like to overexert the bit. Plus it gives you a chance to sneak up on the cut rather than try to get it all in one shot. And when you're really good with both hands like I am here, you can, you can do this. Tom, uh, I what? believe your, your router's a Jessup, right? I think. Yeah, the router table is a Jessam. It's nice. Solid. Um, Dave's asking, shouldn't you run that with the larger square side against the fence? Um, you could, yeah, but I'm, I'm still... You could run it either way right now because it's extremely stable. I don't have... I still have a, a nice flat there. Um, if it looks like... I'm still going to have a flat. So it actually doesn't matter in this case. But... Yeah, you want to be thinking about that. In fact, when I built, when I did the first railing, I, I shot the, um, the cove first. For that reason, I was concerned about that. Then I realized, oh, it didn't really matter in that case because I didn't want to lose stability on that. But here we go. All right, so I'm not quite the full quarter yet. It feels like I could go a little deeper there. But that feels pretty good. Now, if your hands are a little narrow or whatever, you could always make your railing a slightly narrower. You know, two and, two and three quarters is, you know, it's like, it's like a wide shoe, right? You want to, you just think about that way, I guess. You want to, but the nice thing about this is whenever you're, whenever I'm making something like this, I usually have a, a pattern piece or a scrap piece and run the, the, uh, the molding and then you kind of map it out, especially if you really want it to be special and you're going to have it for years in your home, right? Every time you grab that, you don't want to say, man, I wish I had that scrap piece and I would have figured it out better. Because this really is bad. I wish I was like a quarter, an eighth inch up higher. So anyway, um, I'm going to actually go a little bit deeper with this. But it's almost exactly like the other one. So let's give it just a... It's only like a... Well, it's a little more... 
Here we go. I'll hit this and then we're going to readjust for our other one. Here we go. All right. Okay, that's starting to feel like something, all right? So there we have that. I, when I drew it, I accentuated it a little deeper than it actually needs to be, because that's a good thumb hold. I've got my quarter inch at the bottom. Now I has got this lip still. So I'll show you how I created the roundedness on the other one. I went through the bits a little and tried to figure something out, but I ended up doing a little hand method, and I'll show you that in a second. But first, let's go ahead and get the cove done on the other guy here. And once again, I drew it from my own vantage point. Um, so I'm going to drop this down considerably. Let's go. We're going to go an inch and five eighths to the center here. So that's only a five sixteenths deeper. But that's that's. I think that's going to be a quite a difference. So let's just swing that over. You know, we'll figure this out together here. Plus, um, you know, if, uh, if you like this, you know, it's like I'm doing all the work for you. <laughs> Actually, this, um, you don't have the advantage of feeling it in your hand. So, you have to take my word for it. Okay. So I'm a little too far over on that one. I'm going to back it, bring it back. Let me get my other roll. This one's a little too... Ah, oh, clumsy me. Okay, let's put this up. Yeah, I'm at an inch and five eighths there, but it looks... Too deep. What? <laughs> Am I getting some some feedback? No, I can just hear the sound of the falling items after the, what? After they happen, it's funny. I'm gonna go with the inch five eighths. I'm not gonna go with what I drew. I, it just feels like that's too short. All right, so here I go. I'm gonna just drop the the blade the uh, cutter down and we will make a couple passes and see where we want to stop I know I'm probably making some people nervous by cranking this up while it was still on, so I won't do that. I want everybody to be comfortable, and I am going to be safe. All right, here we go.
That feels pretty good, actually. We're a little deeper than a quarter inch. I'm like quarter inch strong or 30 second plus. So now I'm going to go with that. Okay, let's now we'll turn off our dust collector. Our new controller. Phew. Let's pick up our stuff that we dropped. Okay. And now we've got to get that lip off. So you can see how on this one, let's get this in. It's got a nice kind of transition there. And it has a nice little thumb grab. Um, I tried to find a bit in here. You know, I was just looking for some type of combination that I could route that off. Um, there probably is a bit. But, you know, you try to come up with something like this could work, but it would have to be so high in the table it really is too short a bit to work. Um, and that's what I ran into. You know, trying to get one that would work it just is too high off the table to try to make that cut. So I said, no problem. We are highly skilled and we're gonna do this by hand. So I, uh, at least we're gonna figure it out, right? Um, let's see, where's my block plane? She was in that earlier. Oh, I'm looking for my course plane. Here it is. All right, so I usually keep this block plane set more coarsely than Lee Nielsen. I'll bring this one out. You could use it. Um, you know, if you had a slight radius to your plane, that'd be awesome, right? If you have a very soft, I don't, I think I do have one of those wooden ones around, but it's in, uh, it's not accessible right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna use a series of flat cuts and just kind of segment it so I can kind of sneak up on it and create a little round and it's kind of fun when I was doing the railing out there it didn't take long at all I actually worked on a little scrap piece that I had and counted you know so I was like okay I'm I it was like 10 10 strokes with it so one two three four five six now I'm gonna change angle a little seven eight nine ten all right, so with 10, I'm almost there. And then after that, I would feel for a lip. Now I can feel a stronger lip there. So I'm gonna increase the angle here and try to get it right down in there and take that little sharp edge off and just go until it feels right. Okay, now this is set coarsely, so this is a good time to shift to my finer set block plane. You can always readjust your plane, but where's the fun in that? You really need to buy another block plane. If anyone needs a permission slip, I'd be happy to write one. Uh, Maven's asking, what about a half round file or sand it down if it's small? Yeah, if it's a little lip, you could sand it, but uh, this is just a quick way of getting close, and then I'm gonna scrape it. So. Once I get it close like that, then I'll bring in the old French curve card scraper. And I'm gonna bring that into the cove. First I'll just scrape the cove. And you just kind of lean it until you find that sweet spot where it's sitting in that cove nicely. And now I'm gonna bring it up a little bit, kind of roll up the cove. So I'm, I'm cutting into that little lip that I was feeling. And now light, very light passes here. And that's good. Now, I'm a little leery of using a regular card scraper because you don't want to drag that point in there. So what I do is I'll take my finger and just cover the point so that I can't, my finger's always going to be like a guide to not, a depth setter, <laughs> to not let me go beyond that depth. And I'm going to just use this to roll the cove. That feels good. And that's pretty much 
the way I quickly did it. And then you got some sandpaper and you want to go with 150 on this. So we're going to go, and then we'll go to 220. But here I've got this like rubber conforming cold, so that can kind of squeeze right in there. I should have thought where I got this. I forget where I got it. I mentioned it one time. Yeah, I think we found it for a link. I'll find it. Okay. It's a teardrop sander. Okay? Teardrop sander. You'll, you'll just have tears of joy using it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go in there. Nice. That's a shadow. That's not a sharp line at the bottom of that cold. And then... I have these other little cushions. It's really good to have various shaped cushions. I have small ones that do beads and whatever. But this is a little firmer and I can use this on the bead part. So I'm squishing it down in there. Now it's conforming the other way like that. It's just a short little piece. It's, normally you'd be going a nice long runs. And that's good. So I could scrape this outer as well, which I did quickly on the railing, but not that much. That feels pretty nice. See that? Look at it. It's almost like we had, nice. we had the cutter compared to that sharp point there. That looks great. You know? Thank you. <laughs> Is that like move on please no 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 <laughs> sometimes we we do that no. i do that all right here we go 10 times One. this time i won't talk about it as much and you'll see just how easy it is to shape something like this when you don't have the perfect cutter i think i have a couple questions let me um sure i can this is a good time because i'm going to just get this right this can become a template, you know, you can save this. You could just cut off a little chunk and, uh, you know, share it with your friends. If you, somebody wants, says to you, you know, if you save the whole thing, say, man, that's a nice, that's a nice railing molding there. Can I copy that? You just go over to your chop saw and you go, there you go, friend. <laughs> okay, let me see. Um... Here we go. Ed is asking about the, this is kind of off topic, the, uh, the scalpel that you use is an 11A, correct? I, uh, no, Ed, it is not. Or it's 10? actually the 10A. the 10A. I like the 10A blade. I mean, you can use a whole variety of them. I think the 11 is a little more slender. I, I can't remember. I have just found, I like the 10A. It's strong, but it's a good point at the same time. And, but seriously, it's up to you what you like. Um, if you like those, we didn't put a link to that, but we probably s sparked somebody's curiosity about the scalpel. Yeah. But scalpel. it's a very useful tool uh, to do finer work, especially, you know, a little detailing and veneering and inlay, making those little sweet cuts and operating like a surgeon. Um, okay, I got another one. Can you show sometime how to sharpen the French Co. scraper? Oh, yeah. That yeah, that is a good one for a time. Um, um, I will. It's really, it's, it's actually, if you think of it, it's, it's the same process, but you've got to just always be rolling around, and you're just doing sections of it at a time. Maybe that's enough for right now. But. <laughs> Anyway, I'll be happy to do uh, that sometime. And Ken's asking what finish you used outside. Oh, it's unfinished right now, Ken. Uh, the pressure-treated deck, I mean, I just finished this like two days ago. So um, the deck is pressure-treated, so I'm going to let that dry out a year. And, I, and Ed, my neighbor, the builder, he knows what to do. He said, just give it a year, and then we're going to... You treat it with this stuff and it'll be amazing. So I didn't know you had to treat pressure treated, but once it dries, you know, a lot of those planks were kind of wet feeling. But the railing, I got to let it 
that was dry enough I could have put some kind of you know some type of spar varnish on there or something I just want more of a satin look to it I don't want to go nuts you know but you got to protect it because it is just this but it is a really sturdy wood I'm not too worried about it although it just got rained on <laughs> an hour ago <laughs> for the first time Jacob's curious um Hopefully Tom can address how he would join two pieces for a longer rail and how he would create a curve. <coughs> oh man, there are guys online. I mean, uh, there's some guy in Europe that I follow on Instagram, I think. That's all he does is banister railings. And it's really fascinating. Actually, I got a book on it and I was reading it. That's real nerding out. That is like geometry, you know, showing you all the dimensions and just the nature of the spiral curve. It's, it's not all just a straight spiral either, but. All right, so I'm transitioning. I wanna really see how this one feels. This is gonna be a fuller round over. Let's check this out and see how this goes. I'll just hit this cove again really quick. Steve's asking what you'd do if you had a large stairway, nine steps, a rail that is about nine feet long. Would you just buy the rail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be afraid to buy a railing. But, you know, if you had a piece of your own material like I did here, I wanted to, it's kind of a way for me to connect the early apprentice days in North Carolina, you know, to your shop. So you, you feature a piece of wood that, you know, sentimental to you in that way. That, that was my interest. Once Ed said that about, oh, don't you have any nice wood in there? Uh, I had to come up with some. So I had like a, uh, an old beam that I had re-sawn and nice chunks. Like one of the chunks, I had set them aside actually thinking, you know, I got enough for a tall post bed because that's what Pug had. Um, Pug had a, a classic pencil post bed it was his own and was old hard pine like that and it was like a <laughs> talk about old school you know back then they didn't make these massive beds they do now like they didn't have even queen size so he and his wife slept in a double bed the entire life you know in that that pencil post bed <laughs> a double bed <laughs> So they were, they were close. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I got a little off subject there. <laughs> but it just was funny to me. All right, so this one does feel nice and full. And I'm going to just get in here and scrape that little lip off. Just got to detail this a little bit. Can I use my special... right down in there right where it starts the transition you want to knock that get it nicely flowing over yeah I have a um, I have another railing that I actually looked at a little bit for a general dimension um, in my stairwell here at the shop that I was at one of these these you know liquidating builder places and they had a sections of rail they were selling cheap so that's what I got and I got that in my stairwell and feels great so I didn't I didn't run that molding you know if you have a big shaper you could probably make a tremendous railing I don't I don't have that Felder shaper in here anymore they but I do have the Felder table saw the 700 the, the slider which was an amazing asset cutting pieces to length for the shop steps I mean that's one of the advantages I was thinking about while I was building I'm like wow when you're building shop steps you got all the tools you need right inside the door and I was just enjoying that I mean I just set up all the the slider to cut those to length it's like a breeze oh I think I'm liking this one this is what we would want in the house that's that's a fuller that's a fuller figured um, 
railing. <laughs> All right, here we're gonna go ahead and finish it up. And then I wanna just do a little something to the top where we left that heavy fillet and see if we can establish our new original design just with two cutters and a block plane and a French curve and a cart scraper and a teardrop sander. <laughs> Sorry. All right, there we go. I'm about done here. I don't, um, Tom, do you know what the handle on the scalpel is? What the <coughs> description on that? Um, we can give you the link to this. Um, we actually found the link to this on Amazon, if you want to check it out. It's a Swan Morton, Swan with two N's, hyphen Morton, M-O-R-T-O-N. Yeah, I'll put it on there. Yeah, and it's the metal, uh, it's just a metal holder with the whatever. Oh, I'm getting the wave. Okay, I gotta hurry up. What? <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to just do the final scrape. This is nice. Now, that top section, it's just, I left that deep fillet because I wanted to just round that a little bit. So let's just finish this really quickly here. I just want to get the full feeling of this railing. I could sand it a little more, but that's good. All right. So now you can see that's a fuller railing compared to... See, this one's a little squattier, so my, my hand flattens out on top of it a little more instead of cupping around it more like that. So that's a, that's a nice difference. I think to have your cove like a good inch and a half anyway from the top is a good gauge of where you want it to be. I'm actually almost an inch and five eighths from the top. But now I've got that lip. <clears throat> so what you see on some banisters is you have that center raised section but I've got a heavy fillet there. Usually I don't like the fillet to be more than an eighth of an inch, and we're almost 3 16 So I'm gonna actually slightly round that, and again, I was trying to think of cutters that could do that. And I had like this thumbnail cutter. So this is for a table edge, and you could actually try to get it in there, but it's for the gain you get, you're gonna dangerously be cutting into here by bringing that in. And the insert in my router table is not big enough to accommodate this bit. So it wouldn't work. It really wasn't gonna work anyway. So what I'm gonna do is just hold the plane at a slight angle. And I'm just gonna knock that, just bring a little softening radius to that center section so that it it actually curves to your hand. We had to clean it up anyway. I feel like I'm going a little bit into the grain. I'm going to do the same thing this side. Actually, I'm going to turn it around so you can see. So, Tom, Mike's asking if your first block plane is a Lee Nielsen, what would your second one be? Oh, <laughs> actually, I keep a. Uh, I would just get one online, like a nice old Stanley. This is not the nicest one, but um, I would do that, you know? One, one Lee Nielsen I don't have yet that I've, it's kind of like on the, the wish list right now, is, um, what is this one? I always forget, this is a 62 and a, oh, a 60 and a half. I always wanna say 62. The 60 and a half, this is really an excellent, excellent, block plane. So low angle, adjustable throat, beautiful fill in the hand. But they make a little smaller one that's just brass. And they're, they're, they're jewels, you know? They're, they're a little less expensive than this. But uh, I don't know, I just, one of these days off. But I was thinking of, um, 
you could either get that that brass one but that's still more of a detailed one I would just go online and get yourself a uh, a Stanley or, or a good quality used plane and like I said I keep that one coarsely set you know the Lee Nielsen is made to be a fine detail have you ever used a hotly plane Tom? a what hotly plane H-O-T-T-L-E-Y? No. Nate's asking. Where's it from? Is it American? I don't know. Not heard of it. Mike's following up the question he asked about what is your second favorite or would your choice be? Oh. Um, Holtley playing Nate said. Holtley, okay, yeah, that makes, I've heard of that. Have you ever used it? I have not used one, though. No, I think there's a certain number of them that are really in this premium range, you know, like record, the old records. Um, shoot, what's that other one? You guys, throw out the names. I'm trying to think. It's another English brand. Um, begins with C, I think. Uh, but then you have the Norse planes, the old Norse. But there's a lot of nice planes. All right, so now I've slightly radius that. I'm going to finish up by sanding it. I'll just start with 150. Mike's asking if you're referring to the little brown, bronze one, the 102. I think so, yeah. not They have one, I think, that's like a violin, not that one. Uh, there's, it's a little larger, but it's very small. It's deep, but it's almost like this one, but it's a complete... I think it's bronze or brass or something like that. It's a beauty. But that's not, I wouldn't say that's your second. I would just get two of the same size that are good quality and keep this one fine. I mean, you don't have to do it just like I'm doing it. I'm just saying that over the years, I have found that to be really nice because when you're having to readjust your blades, it's a little annoying because, you know, you want to just get the work done. So I set them up and then the, the sharpening works lasts longer and it's just nice that way. All right, so I could do this a little more now. I just broke the edge on the top there. So that little top fillet now, look how clean that is. Now it's like a respectable fillet. It's, I like them to be between a 16th and an eighth. So that's a little strong 16th on both sides, it's softened, and now it's a little radius too. So when I hold that, it feels awesome. So I've got like that feeling of texture in the middle, but it's not digging in my hand. It's a good full railing. That would be awesome in a house. But again, you can customize, tweak them to really fit your hand. And I am no carpenter or railing builder, obviously. What I was doing here was feeling along and almost like developing a molding. Um, I'm tweaking it and experimenting till I get one that feels really right on the piece of furniture or in this case, feels good in your hand that you'll enjoy every time you go up and down the stairs. So if you come and visit me, you will get this treatment on the back porch. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty nice. I mean, it's still, this is probably more for indoor, right? With the added little ridge. I don't want to go too crazy because we don't want to, I, you know, it's hard not to overdo it and be a perfectionist. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mike and Larry are asking how you secured it to the uh, handrail. Did you use brackets? Oh, I just, I just put some 12 penny nails, drove it right through. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I knew that probably broke some heart. No, I actually thought about that. I was all set to, uh, I've got the posts. I've got the, the four by four, which is actually three and a half by three and a half posts. You know, the pressure treated in there. And then it comes right into the trim around the door. And it just ended up amazing that it hits in the middle of that five and a half inch wide trim. So I was about to put drill a couple fortunate bits and then run the screws in and then plug them and try to sand and all that. You know, I got to thinking about it. I was like, man, that's going to be kind of a lot of trouble. And I thought, I wonder if I can finagle the domino in there. 
And wouldn't you know it, <laughs> that's how I did it. I dominoed. I cut this nice little angle. It was like 26.4 degrees, which I was able to totally nail on the Felder saw. That's where the Felder saw, when you're using it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is almost like too accurate. Um, and I'm not, they're not sponsoring me. I mean, they, they, they did sponsor the old show, but I just have gained more and more enjoyment out of that. And cross-cutting angles, dialing that in is unbelievable. So I've got this beautiful little transition. I set up a little jig there so I could domino right at 90 degrees to each face. And I put in one of the heavier dominoes, the heaviest one that the smaller domino will make. And then I also did it where it sits down on the, on the post. There's one, there's two on the bottom, there's one in the middle, and then where it links to the house, I put one in there too. Waterproof glue, you know, the Type Bond 3. And I actually had clamps out there. It was the most furniture-like aspect <laughs> of the whole process. I was like, why am I doing this? But, you know, I think I know why. When it's over and, over and done, you know, I sent pictures to Ed, and he just couldn't say enough. He was so happy with me. It was they worth are beautiful. it. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you do something that's out of place. It almost feels out of place on there, but no, not for a furniture shop. You know, you want to, it's kind of your introduction. You're walking into a place that is creative and it makes things that hopefully feel good in your hand, in your life, and the people around you. Any other questions? All right. Well, I was going to talk about my big tops too. Let me just show you, just scan over here. I'm not going to get into this, but I'm making these five foot round tops for these tables because it's really hard to find tables like that. So what we decided we're going to do is we're going to buy smaller square tables and mount them underneath the top. And it's also really hard to get three quarter inch Baltic birch sheets right now. I tried to get them from my supplier. It's like, oh, sorry that's really not available right now. It's like, what? Because Baltic Birch, they sell in the five, five by fives squares. And I was like, oh, that'd be easy. I'll just get that and cut it out. But it's going to be like 60, I think about 60 bucks a sheet right now. And uh, maybe, I'm, maybe it's more than that right now. I don't know. But it wasn't even available. So I was like, gosh, what am I going to do now? So can't even fit it on the van I have now. Anyway, a five foot square, so I was trying to get them to deliver it. Uh, but long story short, I just grabbed a bunch of crap kind of uh, white pine that I've been storing under my piles of wood out there. So it's about time I started picking from that. And I pieced it together. It's not beautiful, but it's not meant to be beautiful. I'm going to just uh, cut circles. We're going to have nice tablecloths on there. And so you don't even need to see it. But it, I'm probably going to end up painting it. And I will just say this one little tip. When you're doing woodwork that's not perfect, and this is sound like sacrilege right here, but Bondo is your friend. <laughs> I know some antique repair guys. You can actually build up elements that are missing. And they've done it, believe me. I've seen it in North Carolina with Bondo. It dries really nice and hard and dries fast and you can carve it and sculpt it and, and then you can seal it and tone it in wood tones till it looks like wood. But what I'm going to do is just feel like I got some big wormholes here and there. Anytime, any place you have a gap, I clamped up all the cracks and glued them up that I could. But just a quick slab of bongo, you'll sand that up and I'm probably going to end up painting these anyway. But we're going to buy some the folding tables, some smaller ones, and just attach them underneath and it'll be a beautiful table for our events. So we're looking forward to that. Well, um, you, any, are there you any want questions? to just mention how you're going to cut the circle? Nate's asking. Yeah, um, there's a lot of ways to do that, Nate. I mean, you could drill a hole and set up a arm on a router and plunge. We've done that. I think we've done that before. Um, some smaller table projects, round tables. Um, but I'm actually going to use a template that I already made. I went up to the library. I have made these five foot round tables in the past. And you don't usually see them because, you know, this was actually for a dining table in a home that had leaves. Because 
it's almost too far, you know, like uh, awkward talking distance apart <laughs> with a five feet span between you. But that's what this one client wanted. So maybe they didn't want to talk that much. I don't know. But I've got, uh, this is the pivot point here. So I've got ten, two inches of material there. And I just drill a hole and I use the, the bit as my access pin on my piece of MDF or whatever to which I mount the router and I skim around. Now this is thicker than normal. This is like a veneer core, I mean a solid core piece of plywood. I can't remember where I got this, but I usually make the templates out of uh, quarter inch MDF or even half inch um, at, at times, but usually quarter. And then you can ride the bearing on this. So I'm gonna use this to just map it out. I'll, I've got my center line and I'll set it here. And I'll finish drawing. I already got half the circle there. I'll finish drawing. And I think what, because it's so massive, it really is more friendly to jigsawing out, staying off the line, that I'm just gonna clamp this to here and use a flush bearing and skim right around. I may wanna put a little eighth inch round over on the edge just to soften it so that the tablecloths don't snag on there and sand a little bit. But I think for this first little gathering, I'm not even going to finish them. I'm going to just wait and, uh, and then I'll probably paint them after the fact, you know, with a little Bondo. <laughs> Fine woodworking at its best, <laughs> right? All right. Well, thank you all for joining us and spending some time here in the shop. It's always the high point of our week. Yes. We, uh, yep. we, we feel like you're regulars and your guests and welcome here and i'm looking forward to seeing all of you who signed up for the epic weekend we're ready getting ready to have a great time and uh if, remember if you want to potentially be part of that and take a shot at the waiting list we do have a waiting list and people on the waiting list have gotten in so it's not too late necessarily and you can sign up for that at our website um, epicwoodworking.com and did you put a link to that as well? Okay. Alright, remember if you like this content, like, share, and subscribe and all that fun stuff. We love when you do and it is good for all of us. But thanks again for being here. We look forward Oh, what are we going to say about next week? No. Oh. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. We'll say something about next week if you're on our mailing list. <laughs> so uh, you want to be on our mailing list for that. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. We look forward to seeing you next time right back here on Shop Night Live. Yes. Good night, we'll everybody. Look forward to it. Thanks, everybody.